I am unashamed. What about you? I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I mean, just sometimes, Jace, you just look up and you say, who's in charge of my life? I mean, is, is that... <laughs> I had back-to-back nights where the complete total time that I could have slept was four hours. I mean, I had these two weeks circled. Because remember, I missed a podcast. Right. Because I on that day, I I had two things <laughs> scheduled at the same time. Which, which was I, a little serendipity that you got that little break because you came here prepared to do both. But then we had Zach happen to roll in. So we were like, Jason. In reality, just... if I hadn't left, I couldn't have done both. <laughs> That's right. So... Who's, who's doing this stuff? They're like, you are. You've made this. So, I mean, a lot of events have happened. Well, you we already had, what had, people don't understand, too, is that we, you and I both have, we have things that are on the calendar that some of this stuff has been a year ago exactly. on the deal. And so then you got all this new stuff comes up, but you got to, you got to suck it up because people are waiting to hear from you. You know, you're traveling. So, so uh, anyway, just so what I did Friday night. I did a local thing, Celebrate Recovery. Have you been to one of those events? Oh, yeah. And you're well, talking about it. I our, wish you would have let me know. At our church? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they're, uh, they're incredible. That place, which I showed up at about 702, and uh, that place was rocking. <laughs> yeah. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, you know, years ago when we first started, I used to sing with them, like on their praise uh, band. You used to sing. I used to sing with them. Oh. I mean, which shows you that the, the, they were they were scraping pretty low. On the, Where was I? But you know what? The reason I did that, Jace, was oh, because you can't sing. No, I can't. But the music was so loud, it didn't matter because you never heard me anyway. <laughs> but I was doing it to support them because what happens is in a lot of churches is that celebrate recoveries don't work because the the church leadership doesn't always get behind them. Because you know, let's face it, the folks coming in, I mean, they're they're folks with a lot of issues. And so, but that's who we want. I mean, I'm like, I'm like you, Jason. When I go, I, I, I leave there with chill bumps because I'm like, these oh. people, these people are excited to worship because they're glad they're not in jail or, you know, face you down know, the ditch somewhere. The passion there was impressive. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was passionate. Well, it you know was, who's in charge now? Rucker is one of our. Rucker's yeah. the one that asked me. Yeah, right, right. So he's one of our guys. The new regime said, let's have old Jace up in here. Which I actually went at it from a different angle because I I, uh, I tried your – I said, Phil refers to y'all as rehabbers, but they didn't laugh at that. <laughs> so I guess, whoop, wrong joke there. <laughs> <laughs> what Phil does. He does. Phil, I'm just going to let you know, they don't think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was weird. They laughed at everything else. Not that. But – uh. I kind of, you got to remember, I had two lines of thought that I went through. I mean, maybe the Lord put this on my heart, but so I'm doing this treasure hunting show and I'm, I'm doing this goofy paragraph every time because you got to remember the next night, which we'll get to later. That, that was what this event was. The next night I went to a different place in the country <laughs> Totally different vibe in Indiana, and it was awesome for a variety of different reasons. But for the Celebrate Recovery, I got to thinking about this. I mean, I got this whole idea to start this hobby from the Bible. Right. There's a lot of things in the Bible. Well, think about the name, Celebrate Recovery. Well, (laughs) that's what this show is about. I'm celebrating the recovery of things things that are lost. Or forgotten, or yeah. mistreated, yeah. or whatever you want to put in there. Hmm. And I, I didn't thought I, about that, Dave. So I said, "Well, I'm gonna." I said, "Because I'm, my parents were where you were, in the exact room, forty five years ago." That's right. Dad was baptized in that room. So I came at it from a different angle. I said, "Now, personally, I was like, I've never been drunk. Of course, everybody got quiet then. I've never done drugs." So I said, that's why I think I haven't been invited <laughs> to your. <laughs> so I did. When, when, you're, not, you're not a rehabber. I'm not a rehabber. But if you think about it, that's really who you should want to come because. <laughs> that's what I said. And they didn't laugh. 
And so I thought, okay, he's got serious. But yeah. I, then I did the old deal about, well, if you had to have all this baggage to qualify to speak here, then Jesus could never speak That's it. That's true. So everybody was, hmm, I got a few hmms on that. And so I said, but what y'all are missing is, my, since my parents went through this, it actually helped me when they came to Jesus because I got to see that process. Right. So I went on this deal thinking, if you don't think what you've been doing before the recovery is, is not affecting your kids, you're crazy. Because I, I, I was probably headed to the same process. Right. But God stepped in, changed them. So I was looking at it from a kid's perspective. I said, I think I offer some insight and some motivation. So I'm like, do that. Yes, God is the one who recovers. So I did a little play on words. I said, I'm here to talk about the, the greatest recoverer there is. Yeah. And so here's what I did. I, I'll give you some insight. Y'all, y'all can tell me what you think. I like I, this concept. Well, I, I you know, yeah. I didn't do it exactly like this because, you know, when you get up there, you can't have notes. I mean, this place was off the chain. Yeah, yeah. Hollering. There's, you know, it's, just, <laughs> it's hard to describe if you hadn't been to one. I, I just couldn't believe it. I said, well, one thing for sure they got is passion. And so, it, uh, it, when it's chip night days, which is once a month, I, I think it's the last one of the month, it's even more off the chain because they're like recognized. I can't imagine it being off. It's, it's the chain. even more, I'm telling you. Al, just... when I finished, you know, me and poor old Rucker, because he looked at me and I looked at him and it was just a small crowd <laughs> coming toward me. And he said, We need to get out of here. I said, <laughs> Yeah, I got to go to Indiana. And so that was. <laughs> They were kind of. That was another story, but <laughs> but uh, I want to be positive, you know. So here's what I, you know, Luke 15, which I've gone through this a lot. So Jesus is sitting there, eating with tax collectors and sinners, the riffraff. Correct. The same type of environment. Correct. <clears throat> that I was. That I was in. Right. And not to base. I mean, look at me. Look at y'all, especially me and Phil. I'm not one to judge a book by its cover for obvious reasons. Right. But I'm going to tell you, this crowd looked rough. It is rough. It's rough. I there. mean, it is. I mean, if you don't have at least 10 tattoos somewhere, you feel out of place. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was. They look, just looked scary. What was your line, Dad? Sometimes I, I, I meet some of these folks, and I don't know whether to hug them or read them. Meet them or read them. <laughs> meet them or read them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So. I did Luke 15, hit Jesus eating with tax collection center. So he tells three stories. So so think about why he's eating with the tax collectors and center. Why is he doing that? Because he's a human detector. Yep. He's looking for lost treasure, but he has the treasure as us. Right. We're, we, we're, we've fallen through the cracks. So he tells three stories about celebrating recovery. Yep. The guy has 100 sheep, he loses one. And then I was like, you're the one. Because, I mean, I was, I was hollering. Yeah, you're into I it. I normally do for another reason we'll talk about later. But so you're the one. So he find, gets the sheep. So then in the 8 through 10, well, that's what I do. This woman had lost a coin. I find a lost coin. Yep. This is why I got in. <clears throat> Metal to that. Yeah. Because I'm like, because look at, look at all the joy there. It's like like in verse 6 of 15, rejoice with me, I have found my, my lost sheep. Not only that, in verse 7, there'll be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner to repent. I mean, there's a party going on in heaven. That's why I like the atmosphere because it it's, fit it's with, it. with everything we're doing. I'm it's like, a party every time they get together because they're not mm -hmm. somewhere bad. So then I got to the third story, and, of course, they're all the pig pen. I said, y'all smell like pigs. They did laugh at that. <laughs> Y'all been in the pig pen. Right. I said, I was this older brother. I said, no, I'm a sinner. I've messed up. Don't get me wrong. I just haven't done the same type of things because a, a, a crazy event happened in my childhood yep. that changed the way I look at that. Now, I may mess up and I may do all this, but I just looked at my, you know, especially my dad. I was like, I'm not doing that. But how would I have known that if I hadn't been in that situation? Right, if you hadn't observed it. Exactly. Right. I said, but that older brother, he's he tells this story. What whether you're self 
justified or yourself gratified, either whatever your mode of, of operation is, you're still cut off from the Father. I mean, it's all about the love and grace of the Father. It shouldn't be called the prodigal son. It should be the greatest Father. Right. And so why is Jesus telling this story? So that that's kind of the angle that I went. And uh, so let's see, what what else did I do on that? Oh, I went to... Oh, I went to Luke nineteen ten, where he found Zacchaeus in the tree, and he said, "I came to seek, and to save, was lost." So here he had a tax collector. Where did he find him in a tree? I do a lot of digging under trees. Now he was in the tree. That's right. But for say, a better look, yeah. <clears throat> and Jason, I, I always love comparing the because it's Luke nineteen and Matthew nineteen. I love comparing Zacchaeus to the rich young ruler of Matthew 19, the two different hearts, because both of them were seeking Jesus out. Remember, one of them wanted to know, how could I be a little bit better? But he still was holding something back. When Jesus told him what he needed to do, he walked away sad. Zacchaeus was happy and said, I'll give four times what I've stolen. That shows you the difference in the heart, you know, but I love making that comparison when you talk about Zacchaeus. That was good. Yeah. Uh, Now, what did I have this Matthew 13? The sower? Four. No, I had Matthew thirteen forty four. I, I can't even remember what that says. Uh, it, I didn't have any notes, but I read these before I got up, and so then I just kind of let the spirit. Oh, oh, oh! Duh! This was going to be my whole point. <laughs> <laughs> so remember this story? I had an epiphany about this. That's why I'm excited about sharing this. I mean, I'm coming with guns a blazing this morning. But it was exciting. So Jesus said, "The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure." hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Then he says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. So you say, well, I've always looked at that from my perspective. Like I've tried to apply it, and I've read read commentaries on it, and it's always, well, that's the gospel. When you find the gospel... You sell everything else and you sell out for you, the you, yeah. Well, duh. I didn't think about Luke 15. I didn't think about this Zacchaeus, this quote. I didn't think about uh, John 12, 32, when Jesus said, by his death, he would draw all men to him. Right. Jesus is the greatest human detector, God through Jesus. That was his way of rescuing people and, and, and finding it. So when I looked at this from God's perspective, it it meant more to me. Mm. I'm like, he humbled himself, became nothing from his perspective, a human, and basically sold out for us. Yeah. So that was kind of what I had going. I mean, uh, I, I had this line, in reality, I mean, yes, the gospel, because we're in First Corinthians 15, that is the most important. That is the game changer that is the nuts and bolts but in reality the gospel finds you god has been hunting us since that's why he put us here right and so i don't think we look at it from his perspective but i mean i've given you some pretty overwhelming evidence that he came here to find us that's right and he did something that we're drawn to yes because of our problems but the cross answers our sin problem, the resurrection. So, that, so that's, the way I, that's the way I went at it. What's so incredible about his coming was that he changed the nature of deity forever. It's, that's a huge thing when you think about it. In other words, he, he has always been, but he was always been in a certain way. But when he came here and became a human being, he changed the nature of deity forever. Exactly. And, and which is such an incredible gift. Let's take a break. So dad probably doesn't know this, but Jace, I'm sure you do, because you and I still do grocery shop. I love to grocery shop. Do you, do you still love to shop for groceries? I do. Family? I love it. Something about being able to pick out your own stuff. But inflation is out of control. And you see it in the price of a lot of things, yeah. but especially in meat. Mm-hmm. And so that's why one of our sponsors, Good Ranchers, 
uh, has a really good deal that you guys need to check out. In the grocery store, some of these meat prices have doubled just in the last few months. Yep. But the good thing about them is once you subscribe to Good Ranchers, your price never goes up. So you're locked in. Your meat's coming. It's not going to go up like it does in the grocery store, which is you know a great deal. They sell 100% American meat. Uh, and because 85% of the grass-fed beef in stores comes from overseas, and then they just process it here. So you don't be paying a premium price for cheap foreign meat. These guys got American only. Uh, they take the guesswork out of the meat aisle, come straight to your house, uh, always a good source, ethically raised. So you go to goodranchers.com slash food, you're going to get $30 off plus free express shipping. So it's really good. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. <clears throat> GoodRanchers.com slash bill, $30 off free express shipping. And look, if you don't buy the meat in your house, tell the one who does. Check out GoodRanchers.com slash bill. So now, so I, now. I would just I'll go ahead, interject go ahead. Just, just a thought. And uh I've spoken on this the last two times at the university. How shall I say this in a nice way? Say it nice, Phil. Say it nice. <laughs> you got to remember. <laughs> granted, uh, I don't when, know. You, when you find Jesus and you find salvation, there is a time to celebrate that. There's a time to celebrate it. Correct. But life being what it is, it's interesting that if you go back all the way to Leviticus, throughout the scriptures, over 100 times, when I count words that are used, when it reaches 100, I say, I need to, to remember that. I need to, to speak about that. I mean, just mentioned 100 times. So in all of this, uh, that there's such a thing as the Bible completely lays out the scenario. By the time he gets to the prophets, the, the, the main prophets, Isaiah, and moving forward, this thing of peace, peace, <coughs> keeps coming up. Now, it's not mentioned but three times, but I'll just give them to you quickly. In lieu of what Jace is saying, the celebration part. It's time to celebrate. Right. But life being what it is, faith, hope, and love, and peace, peace of mind. You're not at war anymore. There is a time to be uh, calm, serious, and protective. In other words, you got in the Corinthian letter we've been studying, but I said, I just wonder how many times this is mentioned because I was, I was over in Psalms, uh, I was in Psalms, Proverbs, Isaiah. Uh, then I got on in the New Testament, which I had the path of peace. God's call us. He's, he, he begins to, the prophets begin to tell you the source of peace. In other words, literally worldwide among all humanity. What a powerful thing he's done. And peace is always at the center of it. Time to celebrate and jump up and down. That's correct. But you say most of life does not involve one big celebration. It's, it's, it's just not the way life works. All the negative things, you know, if, if you're, you're saying, I'm going to celebrate every day, you say, well, how is it? Uh, if, you, if you do anything without peace of mind, Having sat down and studied with many, many, many individuals, peace seems to be the toughest thing to lay their hands on. Like in the context of marriage, which we covered, we didn't say anything about this, but we should have. When he's describing, if, if an unbeliever leaves, you're married to a guy, say you're a woman and you're married to a guy, he's not a believer and he decided to check it to you, uh, let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. Then he makes this interesting point. God has called us to live in peace, to live. You say, if you 
if you live in peace, it's uh, rather sobering is what I would call it. That's 1 Corinthians 7. We handled that. 1 Corinthians 14, which we didn't hammer on it, but we started with the gospel. Everybody needs to remember the gospel is Ephesians. Apostle Paul called it to the Ephesians. Uh, out. He said, it's the gospel of peace. Yeah. You know, be, take your stand with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Right. At some point <clears throat> when the celebration ends and the jumping up and down and being thankful said, okay, and you, you more importantly for anyone's life is to understand it's a great thing. It's time to celebrate, but you, you begin to share with people and you point to them the gospel of peace. And so 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it comes up again. And, uh, and this is a, a serious verse in my point that everybody needs to get. God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. Yep. I mean, it, it needs to be always there. Let's celebrate, but with limits on it. There was a lot of jumping up and down at Corinth. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. But he's warning them and telling them, look, 1 Corinthians 15 there, it's called the gospel of peace. When he said, I want to remind you of this so you don't forget this. It should be, there's a certain amount of, uh, what's the word, soberness mm. about the whole thing. Right. <clears throat> the seriousness of it. That's 1 Corinthians 14. And the other one was, when you get over out of the 2 Corinthians, which we'll, we will cover it, 2 Corinthians, the last thing that's mentioned by the Apostle Paul, and it makes sense because with this particular group, there was a lot of, what shall I say? It was a lot of what Jay saw, and I've been to these meetings and all that, you know, on the celebration part. Finally, brothers, first, uh, Second Corinthians thirteen eleven. Uh, finally, goodbye, brothers. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind, because that's one of the problems at Corinth. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. So there is a certain amount of soberness. Some people take it too far, but I'm just saying, but they're rejecting right. these they're things, right. just so you'll know. When you peace of mind, how shall I say this? Peace of mind is deeper than than having a mind of constant somehow celebration i mean it's it's sobering in many ways so but they're right next to each other thought. the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace correct i mean they're right next to each other yeah. correct i thought that about is fruit I, of the isaiah 9 6 when uh, you know a messianic prophecy about jesus where it says for us a child is born and he yeah, will be called down. wonderful counselor of course you you understand him pouring out the spirit yep Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince yeah. of Peace. Yeah. Which, that's where we get that Prince of Peace from. Yeah, but, I would say, I would add in that it's not an either or to both your points, but instead it's a both and. In other words, <clears throat> the one Jason is describing in, in Luke 15 is the initial finding of the person by Jesus. Cause that's I agree right. with you. You could flip that and you look at it. That's the celebration. That's right. But well, over right. time, as you grow and mature as a, as a believer, it does change your perspective and it doesn't mean you're just a stick in the mud. It just means that there, I like well, the way you used it. There's a soberness about time, how you I used to celebrate sin, <laughs> right? Sinful behavior. Well, right. Oh, exactly. But, but you got to remember the older brother's problem in Luke 15 is that he couldn't celebrate. Correct. He was. That's he where was, the problem comes in. Because it's a legalistic thing. What he was That's calling right. peace was that he couldn't celebrate his brother coming back because right. he, he could give you 101 reasons why you shouldn't take him back. That's yep. right. Well, he doesn't understand the reconcilable offerings that God and, and the purpose. 
Because what my point is, which, which there is a time to celebrate. Oh no, it is. It, well, joy. Look, well, you, First Peter, when it says we're we're filled with an inexpressible and glorious yeah. joy, because we're receiving, we are receiving the goal of our my faith, point the is, salvation of our souls. Just remember, life life itself is uh, pretty tough, and uh, it calls for. Uh, some rather serious soberness from time to time because well, I, it, it's not I, a I life. Think, I think it's, what, it's not going to be, uh, what shall I say, jumping up and down all the time, you say. Well, look, let me give you a story on on what I think your point is. Hang on, let's take a break. So we've talked about on our podcast, especially in Corinthians, is the resurrection being the ultimate life insurance you know, for any person. I mean, yeah. it's the ultimate, right? It's the one that, that yeah. guarantees everything. But while we're on this earth, sometimes as you grow a little bit older, I've realized that I have a need for life insurance while I'm here, especially when I think about my kids and I think about Lisa, you know, if I happen to be the first one to go. And so one of our sponsors is a, is a company called Policy Genius. And what they're doing is they help you find the best rate on insurance, on life insurance. And so you go to them at policygenius.com slash fill. You're going to answer a few questions. And then after a few minutes, they're going to you know, personalize your quotes from all the top companies. They're going to find your lowest price. And you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. So we want you to check these guys out. They don't add on extra fees. They don't sell your information to third parties, which is huge. They've got tons of five-star um, reviews across uh, Google and all the other places that you that you look and search. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance, and they've placed over $120 billion in coverage. So they're very good. Check them out, policygenius.com slash fill to get your free life insurance quotes and see what you can save. That's policygenius.com slash field to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. So look, I had back-to-back events Friday night. Then I was a thousand miles away, I guess, in Indiana. Did another one. It was spectacular. And so I'm, I'm pretty well as fired up as I can be. But in real life, because all the flights went well, everything, you know, it just sometimes things work out. You know, the weekend before, the event was good, but everything around it was, it was a disaster. I've had so the same I'm like, thing. you know, everything just went my way. And so even, even the layovers, I'd have like 10 or 15 minutes and just bam, we made it. You know, if there had been any delay, I was like, who scheduled this? There's no way we could have pulled this off. So I get back. And the pilot comes on. I'm on the last leg from Atlanta to Monroe, and he's like, we're going to be there 20 minutes early. I thought, I mean, you just can't make this up. <laughs> we fit, We started strong. We're changing the world. You know, God's using us. This is awesome. I'm happy. Everything's going great. So we land 20 minutes early. So we ride up there to the Nobody's to, there to, to the let the you out. And he says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, keep your seatbelts on. Uh, we're since we're here early, there's no one here to set up the game. Oh, uh, so many and times. I thought, so many times I've been there, Jay. Well, <laughs> ten minutes went by. Now twenty minutes went by, which the the early part has now evaporated. <laughs> That's right. So then you're like, well, now we're going to get there because I was thinking we're so close yet so far, and I was I was typing this because people were like, are you there? Or have you landed? Are you back? And I'm like, well. I'm, I'm sitting here. But, you know, we're doing all this Bible study in, in the podcast, and, and what popped in my head was that, and to Phil's point, I started getting frustrated here. I, I was like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> but I thought about that love is patient. Love is patient. And then I just started racking my brain, and I thought, I'm, I'm really struggling to find something to love right now in this moment. <laughs> How? <laughs> so look, another there. 10 minutes went by. So now we're late. Now I'm technically <laughs> late, but look, I'm sitting in the smallest aircraft available for a group of people. And the smallest seat for a person. And everyone, the, the people are getting restless. Oh, yeah. So not, you're not going to believe what happens next. This is far from over. <laughs> so another 10 minutes goes by. 
So finally, we get out, and I was thinking, freedom, yes. So we get out, and I got this mask on I've had on for hours. Oh, yeah. So I walk out of the airport, I was like, yes! I can breathe. Oh, well, I'm in the long-term parking, so I get in my vehicle, and since I didn't check a bag, pro move. You're right I'm out. I'm first in line. <laughs> right. So I pull out, well, the place where you can put your credit card to pay for your parking, it has a has a do not enter. So I have to, there's a person in the window. So I have to go in there. That's a huge thing. So I pull up there, I get my credit, I mean, I have my ticket and I'm holding it out, but the window's kind of tinted a little bit, so I don't really look, but I just have my ticket out the window. Well, an uncomfortable amount of time goes by and I look. I got to looking through the glass. Nobody there. No, there's a girl there. She she has her head back, her mouth open as wide as it can go. She sound asleep. <laughs> so I thought, I went, hey, nothing. <laughs> it actually crossed my mind. She might be that, dead. <laughs> yeah, that I thought, we have a problem. So I, I looked around and I thought, you know, Welcome to Monroe, you know what boys. I said? Here's a redneck alarm clock for you. I just <laughs> laid on the horn. So what I didn't realize is she had taken her arms out of, she had a short sleeve shirt on. She had taken her arms out and put them inside her shirt. I guess she was cold. But when I blew that horn, <laughs> it scared her. And she just started like throwing haymakers inside her shirt, bewildered with her head going back and forth. And I don't... She had had a rough night. <laughs> Look, it's, it's noon. Up. It's noon. It's not like I came in the middle of the night. It's 12 o'clock in the middle of the day. I was like, what is going on? And look, she looked all bewildered, and she said, why'd you blow the horn? I said, I thought you were dead. <laughs> she said, I was sleeping. Said, like, why would you disturb me? I said, it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> And we're at an airport, and you're, like, taking the pavement. I thought, this is real life. I mean, you know, I, I have been on a spectacular high. And I, I, I was angry at first because she was chastising me for blowing the horn. And I was like. <laughs> what would you call it, redneck I, alarm? I kept thinking, <laughs> do your job. But I didn't want to say that. Right. And. I gave her the... Was she young, port- could you tell? Yeah, she was young. Okay. I'd say maybe mid-20s. And I thought, I drove off and I thought, man, life is just hard. I mean, it's hard to have a good attitude and not get mad. <laughs> you can't be on a more spiritual high. And <laughs> I've n- had two instances so You went from here. the mountain to the valley in about what I'm saying 30 is, minutes. There is a danger. <laughs> it's mentioned in the Corinthian letter. Uh, by the by, the, by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, every one of you, this is Romans twelve. Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. There's a time for seriousness. But I think it's, life it's, is just not if you if you buy into the idea, it's just one big celebration. I would say you're, you're kind of missing the point here. You need to be more serious about what has happened. The God of peace is no longer you're no longer at war with him. There's a time to celebrate. But life being what it is, you better be get ready for the well, long, the, point the, long haul. the point is life is difficult. Things don't go your way. That's why you have to have peace and joy. But you have to be open and willing to celebrate in people coming to Jesus, which my whole point was, if God is the ultimate finder, if it's more about him finding us and us realizing what he did and does for that to happen, then when you read verses like, because I did this thing, I'm going to reveal some mysteries in my speech, and one of them was, the mystery of being godly, which is Colossians 1, right. is that Christ is in you. Yep. I read Galatians 2.20, that I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. Well, if Christ, the same Christ who was eaten with tax collectors and sinners, who found Zacchaeus and said, I came here to seek and to save. If I'm drawing all men to him, if I'm the one, I'm after human beings and their relationship with God. I want to live with you forever. 
if he's in us, to me, we should still be allowing him to use us to get Jesus out. Yeah. And so part of that is the celebrating when they actually come. But I was more focused on the whatever we do, whatever talent, whatever gift we have, let's unite in letting God use us to find other humans, just like he did when he was on the earth. Right. And so then I ended it with this, which I was going to ask you all this question. This is kind of a, of a riddle. Hang on, let's take a break. Where is the greatest place to treasure hunt? So y'all got the riddle question? Where is the greatest place to treasure hunt? Where is the greatest Where? place? All right, everybody got the question. You don't have treasure. to answer because you're like, what? It's kind of a trick question because I should have said who, but I wanted to throw you off. So I just said where. Where is the greatest place to to treasure hunt. So I'm going to read you Colossians 2. So all you uh, treasure hunting enthusiasts, you'll like this. Feel free to use this. I didn't come up with this myself. So Colossians 2, verse 2, my purpose, Paul said, that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Now listen to this. In whom are all in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I look. So the best place to treasure hunt would be Jesus. Yeah. That's pretty good. And and to your point, that right there, the recovery is far more critical than the celebration of it, the recovery itself. But I do think it's important. I mean, I do think it's important. I mean, you're right. It is more important, the recovery, on who's yep. doing the recovering. Because, look, I've seen these things where people come to Jesus, but then all of a sudden, that's why I'm real careful about saying, I'm going to share my testimony. And people say, you know, they, then they just talk about all what they did. Well, the power of all this is what God did, so you could be transformed. Yeah. It's actually that, it's actually God's testimony in you. I like that, <clears throat> right? Which to, is what to Phil's point. Yeah, you right. know what I mean. I'm not celebrating the fact that I went out there and lived like a complete disaster for 20 years. You remember, <laughs> you most people, I mean? most people who come out of the world, including me, came out of life was in their mind. They. I looked in my case, I didn't look any deeper than party time. Right. Just party time, party time. Well, I learned that there was way more to life than the partying. Right. You got to remember people who deal with drugs and alcohol and immorality. Life's just one big party, Al. Right. But, yeah. but the downside of it is it it, well, it, it will get you I, I down on you. the ground where you end up in a place where others are. Well, if you did a if you did a little sit down interview with everybody that Jay's was there with on Friday night, they will they would tell you a, the same story over and over again. Yep. Of the same one as the young brother in Luke 15, where they were literally mired in a place. That is right. That was destroying them. That is correct. And destroying every relationship they had, everything yep. in jail. You know, a lot of people come to our CR because they're court ordered, because our system of justice in Washtenaw Parish has recognized that if they can get them to some place and get them off of these drugs, that they probably won't be repeat, you know, crime offenders. And it'll help their life. So they even recognize, like every oh, ju- yeah. every judge in our parish has visited our celebrate code. You know that, Jay? I didn't know, but every I'm not surprised one. because it is a difficult thing. You know, it's one. I think it starts off, yeah, let's go party. I'm young, and then all of a sudden it becomes consuming and, and destructive and destructive. Yeah. And then you you've dug such a pit that it it even hearing what the Lord did for you and responding, you're still going to wake up the next day and have this pool to go back into the pit. Right. I mean, it, There's a mighty throng out there that have the uh, un, uh, misguided thinking that, you know, if I do what y'all are saying, 
You're talking to me to repent of my sins and start living a good moral life. If you, 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 you're, you, you're taking away all my fun. Yeah. That's the way they look at but it. But destruction is but, no fun. I mean, well, I think <clears throat> it, I think it's more like because like one of the guys. I mean, life is I, more than fun and games and drugs and alcohol and immorality. But, but so yeah. we're trying to get people to see that. But I, I, I tell you one thing: it takes some some serious uh, thinking to repent and turn to God and get well, past the fun stage of it well, all. It just takes one day at a time, but. There was a guy, so look, this mob comes after the deal, and they're, some of them are crying, some of them are asking questions, some of them are wanting to take pictures, which is embarrassing. <laughs> but that's what was happening. And because uh, they're like, hey, you're the Duck Dynasty dude. I was like, you're just now realizing that? <laughs> you know, yeah. this is after the speech. I'm like, you're just making the connection. But anyway, one guy, I mean, he was just like being kind of forceful and, grabbed my arm and was like, but what if you can't, I've done something so wrong I can't forgive myself. So that that was his question. And he was just looking at me like, I said, it ain't about you. I just spent 40 minutes talking about God forgave you. And that's, by the way, that's you, it. You see what I mean? It's In a, that moment, but he was he was looking like, well, what, how does that answer It's a problem? faith issue because yeah. you don't believe that God can forgive you for that sin. That's why I don't even like the term forgive myself. I mean, I know people use it, but by the way, you never find that in scripture. I challenge you to find a place in scripture where it says you're commanded to forgive yourself. It's not in there. No. Trust me, I've looked because I wrote a book about forgiveness. But the idea about God forgiving us or forgiving one another is all over. So, so what that tells me, Jace, is that when someone says that, they have a faith issue. They can't accept the forgiveness of God. It's not about me forgiving myself. It's about me believing God is big enough to forgive me for anything I've done, no matter how bad it is. Well, I had read in the speech, I quoted 1 Corinthians 10 because I did that thing about, because I, when I said about my perspective was different since I was a, a kid in that envir- in their environment, and fortunately God used that to keep me from having more baggage in my life because I, I just I really believe God's hand was in that, <clears throat> but I did to, say to your point, as you'll choose one way or the other. I mean, you'll either exactly. you'll either follow the example or not. Let's take our last break. But I did refer to First Corinthians ten, where it said, "No temptation has seized you except what is common to man," because there's just a temptation, especially in that group, to say, "Well, yeah, but I." was tempted more severely than the common man. That's why I turned out so bad. So bad. You don't understand what I went through. And I'm like, I'll tell you this, whatever you went through wasn't near as bad as what Paul slash Saul went through or these disciples, I mean, which all of them eventually had their, were martyred and had their heads cut off. And I mean, you just think about what they went through. <clears throat> but uh, I, I just, I think they read that and don't realize it's not about what I went through. The point of that was that God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. That's what it says. That's what it says. It, but people, they just don't accept that. Because well, I'm saying I went through that in detail in yeah. the speech. And that guy's response was, well, what if I can't forgive myself? He threw that passage that I went through. He just threw it under the bus. Right. But there's a door out. He did forgive you. It's not about you. You need to trust him. What else? Can, but he was like, he was shaking his head. No, when I, when I was responded this. But I would, if I would tell this guy, but you know, you're here and you're listening to what was said. So even though you're not ready to accept it, you're on a faith journey to get there. You know, well, right. you just have to be. And, able- well, and what's different about that group that I met with, uh, it was a, combination of groups i mean you couldn't stick another person in there but uh, i was talking to rucker and he's like some of them aren't even believers right know, because they have they're through these programs that funnel them through something to yeah they come there their- basically to stay out of jail and so but right. you're having See, a, they're hearing it for the first time all right you got a lot of people they're like oh well what is this now so but i think it was a i mean it was a great event i don't mind the I do think when you come together, it should be a celebration. I, I, I do think that. Mm. 
I think the where Phil's point is with the peace, you've got to find that day to day, right? Walking and because you can't live in the media, you can't live in the pep rally. It's like nope. what I said. I feel like nope. I can't could, live there. Nope. I, I could not have been any more saturated in doing God's will in, in my uh, mind and everything going great than this past weekend. But like I said, when you get home and you start living life, I mean, there was. I was getting angry, you know. I mean, I was getting frustrated. I so you you just you have to kind of laugh at yourself, but in a way, you got to find that peace that you know life life can be difficult here. You know, our friend uh, Anna Thomas at the marriage retreat a few weeks ago said so. She she and Trey love to hike, and we were talking about this experience we had at a marriage retreat. It was really great, but she had a great point at the end. She said, you know, Trey and I hike, and we get up on top of a mountain, and it's beautiful. I mean, it's like we made it, you know, it was hard to get here, but we did it. We look around and we enjoy the beauty. And then after about 30 minutes, we start saying, you know, there's no water here. There's no food. There's none of the things we need to survive. Uh, we couldn't, we couldn't even spend the night here without being in a bad shape. So she said, you know what we do? We go back down to the, where all that is, which you, is. You go back down to reality. Right. So our point was you can't live on the mountaintop. There's not enough to sustain you there. The, the life is in the valley. And so I thought that was a powerful point for just kind of how we go about it. I do, too. Well, go ahead. I think one of the points, though, to Phil's point, in 1 Corinthians, so these people had these gifts, and they were, it was causing excitement because they were, the apostles laid their hands on them, and they were giving them literal supernatural gifts. Right. And so that was causing them to be joyous because it was like, oh, <laughs> Look at me. I mean, I can heal people. I can speak in languages. I haven't studied. I can do all these various things. But it hit me that while we were talking to this, I don't know why this verse popped in my head, but in 1 Corinthians 15, in verse uh, 26, if you think about it, what is the greatest cure? If you could come up, like, of all the terrible things, and, and the point I'm trying to make is, let's say you're following Jesus, You've been transformed. You're going to celebration Sundays every Sunday. You're meeting most days in the week. And then you go to the doctor and they tell you you got cancer. Trust me, you're not going to be jumping up and down about that. Right. I mean, it, it so what do you. It's a sobering and, moment. Which is, Phil, to Phil's point, you've got to find peace in that because actually there's all kinds of diseases out there. there there's moments where you're like, you're now relying on what we're talking about, the resurrection, resurrection, but you're not jumping up and down about it. Right. You're fixed to go through a lot of pain and suffering. I think about my daughter, and she's most of her life has been filled with pain and suffering. It just hasn't been a joyous occasion that everybody's high-fiving. But to put it back in the context of the letter to the Corinthians, they're having all this excitement without it being on the foundation of Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. So then he throws that's, in this. That's my the, point. But he throws in this one little phrase that got me to thinking just here in the last five minutes. When he says, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Well, the ultimate cure is death itself. That's what Jesus, that's why having that foundation and what he did through the gospel is bigger than whatever gifts or excitement or whatever you can think of. You have all these gifts. Jesus is actually curing through his resurrection death. Well, that that's where you find peace, and that's where you should find excitement. Right. <clears throat> and that has to be enough. Think about it. When, well, you, right. you, when you come to Jesus, it has to be serious enough to where you look around at the group you've been running with party time and you say to them all of your companions bad company corrupts good morals stop sinning for the, there are some of you who are ignorant of God I say this to your shame bad company corrupts good character it's in there because all these people were jumping up and down and misusing the gifts and all that well there's a mighty throng of them in there they were still running with the people they ran with before it all started. Yep. I see it over and over. They, they don't make the clean break from their former associates. 
they're in the rehab. Their friends have not been there yet, but they, but they, it's hard for them to just say, I died to all that and it's over. I'm done with that. I mean, it takes some soberness of judgment of the heart before you really start seeing what this is all about. Life is more, I, I say again, I've spoken to thousands of them through the years. Uh, the, the problem is making a clean break from the world and be humbly, be humble to your God who just saved you. In other words, you can celebrate without just... Uh, Hard to be with your former associates. and Well, you remember in the story that Jay started with in Luke 15, when the younger brother was there and he's looking at his surroundings and he's thinking, you know, I could beat this. Yep. And he thought, even if I went back home, it won't be pleasant because I, I really messed it up there. But this said, then he got up. First he had an awareness, then he got up yep. and left. So to your point, he left where he was yep. to go back where there was security and, and what he knew. And yep. and he didn't even have an expectation of the grace that he received. Remember, he was like, I'm going to just be a hired hand, whatever. I don't expect to be a son. But what God gave him, to your point, Jays, was grace. And he said, oh, no, you are a son because you came home. You are a son. You get the full rights as a son, which yep. I thought you started off brilliantly by comparing yourself to the older brother. Because in that story, if you're going to be one of the two, you don't want to be that guy and live that way. Because that's what the Pharisees were doing, back to the first two verses. Exactly. And, we, and it was a TBD on the older brother. The story just ends with him being bitter. In other words, if you exactly. monitor the behavior of the people who were jumping up and down right here, three hours later, now instead of 7 o'clock, it just got dark, and now it's 10, 10 11, 12 o'clock at night. You say, well, where are a lot of them? Right. They're back to the ones that they're back to where they started. It's trouble. But so, also, the, there's a bunch of older brothers in buildings called churches. Oh yeah. That have removed themselves from the world. I don't want to be in that I don't camp. Want to be in either. that camp. That is correct. I want to see those life changes. There's All a, right. There's a balance in there. So I did. Yep. So I just made a uh, editorial decision that in our overtime, I want to describe the sort of evolution of our celebrate recovery, how it came about. I think it'll help this discussion. Uh, to see where we tried to go with that. And then uh, next time on regular, we'll pick back up in 15. Let's do that in overtime. BlazeTV.com slash unashamed is where you get unashamed overtime. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.